All right, welcome everybody. Hope you guys can all see me. I'm trying to get this thing going. This is going to be a fun session. This is going to be our cram class precursor, right? So what we want to do in today, we're going to go over unit number one or section number one, and this is going to be the real estate business. We welcome everybody here. This is always a fun time. We enjoy it. Um, what we're going to try to do, we're trying to do one of these every week, if not twice a week. Uh, it's always a good time. What I want you to do, though, is I would love to have you participate. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, go through some questions. We're going to go through uh, some information you're going to see on the state exam. Now, in our group, our fabulous group, we do such a great job of that. In our group, some people have said that they're seeing some questions that they thought might be not on the test, but they were. So make sure, make sure that whenever you have your book, you read it from uh, front to beginning. Uh, front to end, I should say. One thing I did do is I added a link and there's going to be a, a, a really cool option for you to get a really, really neat guide. It's going to be in the link in there. Um, it's an unbelievable ultimate guide to everything you need to know to pass this real estate exam. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it does have uh, several tests, several quizzes. It's got a whole math section. A lot of people get nerved up on math. It's got everything you need to know. And if you put in CRAM 2022, CRAM 2022, I'll put that up in the comments. You do get 30% off. So make sure to do that. But I'll go ahead and talk about that later. First, let's go ahead and get started. A lot of really good information. We want to have a bunch of people here. And uh, we, this is, this is going to be a fun time. So what I want to do is I want to get go ahead and get started. I think it's essential that we, we go and we... We learn as much as we can. I'm going to put myself in the bottom corner down here uh, so you guys can see me just a little bit. And then I'll move myself if I get in the way. Uh, let's go ahead and get cranked up. I know a lot of you are watching either on the Facebook group. And this Facebook group has been excellent. You guys provide a bunch of really, really good information. Um, also, we are live on Facebook, if uh, YouTube. If you are on YouTube, please, please, please go look for our uh, real estate Florida Real Estate Exam Cram Group. It's in a, our Facebook group. We really want you to come on board and enjoy it. That's a great group, and everybody in here has done such a, a fine job and in getting involved in that. So that's been essential to the success of our group. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is going to be Section 1 or Unit 1. It's going to be the same information uh, broken down uh, in, in a easy to review and look at format that's going to be crucial easy to review and look at format very important okay let's talk a little bit about this now believe it or not there is only one or two questions on the state exam from this unit so what i'm going to try to do is every week add more units to it but you're going to see one or two questions from this unit on the state exam 
But the problem is we don't know exactly which ones they are. But I'm going to go ahead and go over this. So when you hit the state exam, you will know exactly what you're going to see. What I would like to have you do, if you've been here, if this is the first time you've ever been here, please put in the comments, welcome or hello or whatever you want. If you are on Facebook, you have to click a little thing saying it's on StreamYard so we can see who you are. Um, got you. Have the live started? Yes, the live has started. I hope you can see it. Uh, Jenkins, can you see it uh, on the uh, YouTube group? Uh, let's let me know. Okay, awesome. Hello, thanks for putting that up there. It's good. Put a little something in there so we know you're there. It always makes us feel a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the real estate business. Let's talk about the real estate business. Now, the real estate business is per, is, is there to provide a service for others in return for compensation. Now, usually that service is going to be the sale or transfer of a home, one property to another. Very, very important that you understand that, okay? We got a big group here on Facebook. I love it. A good group on YouTube. So what we were doing is one of that, that business is that brokers provide a specialized service in return for compensation. Now, if you see something on the state exam that talks about compensation, it does not necessarily mean that they're talking about actual money. Compensation could be something of valuable consideration, such as a motorcycle, a boat, a plane, a train, that type of thing. It could be something of valuable consideration. But nine times out of 10, we're going to be getting paid by commission. It's going to be in the form of money. Okay, very important to remember that. Okay. Now, real estate professionals real estate professionals our our big thing is in a real in a real estate professional as a real estate profession we provide three different things now what do we provide to our uh customers we provide property transfer what is property transfer that's basically taking the house from a seller to a buyer from a seller to a buyer okay if I'm a buyer, if I'm working with the buyer, I'm going to help facilitate that transfer for the buyer to get that home. Very important. Okay. Hello, everybody on Facebook. I'm so glad you guys are all here. That's great. I love it. Okay. They're going to be that transfer is part of our duties, right? We have to help them maybe get the inspection, help them with the title work. We try to facilitate that. And in Florida, in Florida, our default our default transact where our transaction broker relationship as a default. So for the most part, we're going to be trying to work and juggle all that stuff, but we are experts in the transfer of property. Now we must also, we must also know the market conditions. I can't tell you how many times people come up to me and say, Hey, Tim, what is the market condition? What are, what are we looking at right now? Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? You know, what is it? Over the last couple of years, it's been a seller's market. Now we're in a midst of a change with the current economy and some interest rate changes and things like that. So it's starting to creep over to being a buyer's market where people have some options to buy uh, at a pricing that they can, they can work through, okay? Stina says, my Florida, let me put this up here. This is pretty cool. Let's give her, let's give uh, him or her a, a thing. So. My Florida State exam is in three hours, so thank you so much for this live. You are going to, this is going to help you out. Uh, make sure you let us know. Thanks for jumping on with us. That's great. Uh, we got some hellos here. Uh, Jenkins on YouTube. We got a few more hellos. That's good. Awesome. Great to see everybody in here. You guys are fantastic. Now, we also, in knowing the market conditions, we must know pricing. What are the prices? What, how are things working? We must be knowledgeable of this stuff at all times, okay? People are going to look to us to provide them with that knowledge. So again, property transfer, market conditions. Those are going to be two things. The third one we're going to have, the third one is we have to have knowledge how to market a house we're selling or a business that we're selling. How do you market that? Do you market on social media? Do you market it on, uh, you know, print text? You mark, there's so many places we give out brochures. How do we market that property? Businesses are going to be different, mark, different marketing uh, than a residential or an agriculture or commercial property. Okay, so all these are going to be different, but we are experts in these three areas. So if you get a question on the state exam, 
what is the you know what do we provide what expert knowledge do we provide we provide property transfer market conditions and how to market real estate businesses okay um market real estate and businesses i should say all right make sure you're familiar with that now there's going to be five major sales specialties five major sales specialties now what are the five major sales specialties we can look at it here on the screen and i'll do a little split screen on this I'm not sure if you can see that um so i'll put that back but there's five major sales specialties now the first one is real easy it's residential residential is where we live okay where we live that's going to be it where we live sleep and and play usually okay commercial is going to be where we go to work where we go shopping where we go to um have a fun time maybe an amusement park that's going to be commercial okay commercial the third one is going to be industrial a lot of people ask me well give me an example of an industrial park normally industrial parks and most of your cities of, of some size do have industrial areas within it but normally it's going to be where people fix vehicles maybe construct cabinetry uh that type of thing maybe work uh, work on large trucks or maybe you know sell marble and granite and things like that it's going to be an industrial park type setting the fourth one the fourth one is going to be agricultural a lot of people ask me what about agricultural in the state of florida agriculture is huge in the state of florida it's great uh we've got a lot of cattle a lot of livestock we've got a lot of fruit we've got a lot of vegetables we've got a lot of things that need to be produced here in the state of florida so we have a huge agricultural market and the fifth one, the fifth one is going to be businesses. Okay, businesses. A lot of people ask me, businesses. Okay, what, you know, the sale of businesses. What you have to know is on your state exam, you might have a question that says, do you need a special license to sell businesses? And the answer is no. All you need to do is have a real estate license. Now, it's a specialty, I will tell you, very much like commercial, and you will go to, uh, training and get educated on that because very rarely do you have people that go to residential, commercial, and businesses. Usually they have those specialties. I used to do a little bit of those, of, of each of them, but really it's a specialty. The big thing I need you to remember on the state exam is there may ask you, on my experience, is do you need a special license to sell businesses in the state of Florida? And the answer is going to be no. Okay. Now, let's talk about the different types of ways that we can cultivate business, okay? As a real estate professional, especially when you're new or even when you're experienced, a lot of people will go into this thing called a farm, farm area, okay? Now, some people ask me, well, what's a farm area, okay? And it's actually pretty easy. When a farmer goes out, they plant seeds, right? Initially, it's going to take a little while for those seeds to grow up and to you know bear fruit or bear vegetables and that type of thing hi michael good to see you on here way to go those real estate professionals they go out into communities maybe neighborhoods that they live in or maybe neighborhoods that they grew up in or they're familiar with they go out and what they do in those communities is they possibly go out and knock on doors they possibly go out and maybe give calendars i had this lady used to come by every year in season and give like a, a bag of seeds out and i think there were tomato seeds and there was pumpkin seeds and uh, all kinds of different things during football season which i like the best she used to come by and give us football calendars well guess what i would consider her i did consider her as the specialist in the community because she farmed that area okay the one thing about farming is it doesn't happen overnight it takes some work you're going to have to go out there three or four times, at least uh, three or four times every half a year. So that makes probably uh, five or six times per year. You're going to have to go out and make sure they know it. Um, also, you can send you know, flyers in the mail, that type of thing. That's also considering farm, farming. But what it is, it's honing in on a specific area or geographical area. Everybody good with that one? Um, you can give me thumbs up in the Facebook if you are. I think you can. On, I think you can even on YouTube. Just let me know if you guys are good, all right? Now, the next one we're going to talk about, don't get these too confused. The next one we're going to talk about, this is going to be called target marketing. Target marketing. Now, what is target marketing? Now, we are going to target a specific niche. 
Florida's great for this because you have people in Florida that just love to go golfing. So what you would do is your prospective buyers, your prospective buyers are going to maybe want to be on a golf community. So what you do is you create a list and you send all the properties that you have listed or your office is listed. You send them everything that's golfing or on the MLS, you know, send them those, you know, those properties. If you have somebody who really likes, and I kind of like it now, I'm kind of into it, pickleball, right? You have communities now that are going to be designed around pickleball courts, right? You might have eight or nine of these things. Well, guess what? If there's a pickleball court on the property, send your people a pickleball uh, listed, right? Pickleball. Boating's another big one, another good example. These are going to be target marketing areas, okay? Target marketing areas. You can also target market particular jobs for instance if it's you know nursing community or teachers or that type of thing the one thing we can't target market is we can't target market protective classes right you know different races religions that type of thing but we can target uh particular niches such as golfing that type of thing or professions nurses doctors things like that okay just can't target professional um or basically can't target people that are in a protected class Everybody good with that one, okay? Very good. So you're going to see one of those two questions. Now, the next one we're going to cover here is business opportunity brokerage. Business opportunity brokerage. What is that? It's just nothing more than the sale and working with businesses. It's not a different type of brokerage. It's just that brokerage specializes or has a division that deals with businesses, okay? Don't think into it. If you see a question on the exam, like we said earlier about business brokerages, all it is is a brokerage that deals and specializes in the sale of businesses. Okay. And you do not need a special license. It's not like a special business real estate license. Your real estate license works. It's going to be a, another course or area of training, but you will not need a special license for that. I want to make sure you understand that. Okay. The next one we're going to talk about is property management. Basically, prop, property management is taking care and looking after properties or real estate for another person. It could be a person or a company, right? You have property managers, property management, okay? They basically are going to be looking after a business for others, somebody who is not here. Now, one thing I need you to remember, and from my experience, there possibly is a question on this state exam that talks about absentee ownership. A property manager is going to look after a property from somebody who is absentee owner. And those absentee owners are people, nothing more than people or owners of property that do not live on site or at that property. Okay, They could live across the street. They could live down the road. They could live up, in, up north somewhere. Okay, Now, Florida, they might ask you a question like this. Why is Florida a big state or a, a state that uses property managers? Because we have a lot of absentee owners okay, in the state of Florida. We have snowbirds. We have people that come down and just rent. That would be a situation where property uh, management would come in. Now, one thing I want to uh, talk to you about is does a property manager need to be licensed? That's a big question out there. Does a property manager need to be licensed? depending on what they do for the property. If a property manager manages the property and they receive a commission for every piece of property that they rent or sell, then they will need a license. The word and the keyword I want you to hone in on is do they get a commission? If they get a commission, then they will need to be licensed. Everybody good on that one. If they receive a commission, they will need to be licensed. That goes with pretty much everything that you're going to have on the state exam. If they receive salary only, just salary, okay, a real estate license in most cases, I use that fairly, in most cases is not needed. If there's a combination of salary plus commission, in other words, if the person gets paid, if you see the question, he gets Joe gets paid, property manager Joe gets paid $1,000 a week plus $400 for every place he rents, Joe is going to need to be licensed. Okay. Joe is going to be need to be licensed. That word commission is crucial and key. Okay. Definitely need to make sure you know that one. 
you will also see what is the difference between a property manager and a rental agent. They okay? don't get those confused. A property manager is somebody who oversees the real estate property. They could be the person who hires the, the lawn mowing people and okay, the landscapers. They could be someone who hires the plumbers. They are probably somebody who hires the people to do the windows. Whatever case it might be, they're going to manage property. Rental agents find tenants for landlords or property owners. Okay, they're going to or they work on the leases. Once that tenant or landlord is uh, I'm sorry, once that tenant or person who's coming in to rent is taken care of, they will go on to the next one. So a rental agent deals with individual transactions. A property manager deals with the whole property uh, in general. They manage the property. I just want to make sure you guys understand that because uh, from my experience, there's probably going to be some, some questions that are related to that and they might drill you down. Just want to make sure, just to recap, if they are getting salary only, they do not need to be licensed. Same with a rental agent. If they are getting salary plus commission, they need to be licensed. If they are receiving commission only, they definitely need to be licensed. Okay? Just want to make sure everybody understands that. If you see that in the state exam, we don't want to have any confusion on that whatsoever. Okay? We want to make sure we understand that. Okay. Let's go ahead into this next one. This is going to be a question that's going to come up. Can real estate uh, licensees do appraisals? The answer is yes. We can do appraisals. We can do appraisals. Can we get paid to do appraisals? The answer is yes. However, however, please understand this. Okay, please understand this. If you do an appraisal, it can't be related to a federally uh, federally related transaction. So, in other words. If the person is buying a home under a loan, and most loans are going to be involved in this, a loan such as the FHA, VA, uh, USDA, if it's a federally related transaction or it requires bank being involved, then you cannot do the appraisal on it. Okay, is everybody good with that? But if you're asked on the state exam, can we do appraisals? Yes. Can we get paid for appraisals? Yes. With the exception of anything that's federally related. And again, most of them are going to be federally related. Now, when we prepare, when we prepare a appraisal, we can never say it's a certified appraiser or that we are state certified to do that because we are not. State certified appraisers will do federally related transactions or they will be involved in um, in that. We cannot say that we're given a we're certified to do appraisal because we're we are not. Just want to make sure you guys all understand that. Um, so if you see that word federally related transaction and the word appraisal, we cannot do those. Okay. But some people might ask, when, when would you do an appraisal? 90% of the time, 95% of the time, we're not going to be involved in appraisals. We're going to be involved in something that's going to be called a CMA. So if you get down to the third paragraph there, you'll see CMA. A CMA is the Comparative market analysis. Comparative market analysis. Now, a comparative market analysis is a marketing tool for us. Can we charge for a CMA? The answer would be yes, we can. However, we do not charge for them in 99.9% .9 of the time because when somebody calls us and asks us to do a CMA, and basically what they want to do is they want to get the value for the house. But we, as real estate professionals, we are hoping that we get a listing, right? We're going to give them the price. We're hoping they get a, that they get a listing and we go ahead and can list their home. So what we do on a CMA, let's break down a CMA. Just need a little swig of water here. On a CMA, what we do is we take active listings. We take sold listings. We take expired listings. We take listings that have been withdrawn and we put them all together. And we start doing our magic, right? We come up with a price, a value, I should say, a value for that home. And we suggest to the person who owns it that if they are going to list this home, this is probably the number where it's going to be listed. It's pretty accurate. Now, again, it takes some work and it takes some skill. It takes some time. That's called a CMA. 
you take all that information, you do your research, you come up with a valuation for the home. Okay. I'm going to go up to the paragraph number two. Anytime appraisals, true appraisals, these aren't CMAs, these are appraisals. Anytime appraisals are done, they must, must, must comply with a USPAP, a use path, they call that, the use path. Now, listen, if you have a little card, an index card by you, grab, if you don't grab one, make sure, and this is going to be up on, this is this video is going to stay up on the group. Don't worry, it's also going to be up on YouTube as well. The Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. Make sure you know each one of those words. Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. They're going to go in on the state exam, potentially, and change up some of those words. And they're going to say, what does USPAP stand for? And if you do not know, it stands for Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. They might put program. They might put player, whatever the case may be, you will get that one wrong. But if you know it, it's going to be an easy one for you to get right. Okay, so make sure you understand that. All appraisals must comply with these guidelines. Now, these guidelines are there as standards of practice. What they want to make sure is anybody who does the appraisal, they want to be doing them the same way because if Joe did an appraisal one way and Bill did an appraisal the other way and there's no guidelines or standard, they could be way off everybody understand that now if we are real estate professionals and we do an appraisal guess what if we do an actual appraisal not a cma or a bpo an actual appraisal we must abide by those guidelines as well okay. i'm a broker i don't do the appraisals um, i would suggest to give those to somebody else um, but if you were to do those you'd have to abide by those guidelines so if you see the word appraisal do they have to abide by the uspap or any guidelines the answer is going to be yes. Okay, we all got that one. All right. Now let's go to the very, very uh, low one on there. Okay, I say low one. The last one, the last paragraph. This is called a broker's price opinion. It's a BPO, broker's price opinion. Now, what is a broker's price opinion? Now, it's nothing more than a step above a CMA. Let's just call it that, and below an appraisal, right? So, a broker's price opinion is a Broker's written opinion of the value of the real property, okay? The value of the real property. Now, a broker can charge an additional fee or a separate fee for a BPO, but it cannot, cannot, cannot be used um, to bounce off a federally uh, uh, related loan. So you can't use this for a federally related loan. This is not an appraisal, nor can it be labeled. Remember, you know that as well. It cannot be labeled as an appraisal. Appraisal. Okay, make sure we understand that. This cannot be labeled as an appraisal as well. Okay. A BPO can be done by a sales associate. It can be done by a sales associate licensee, real estate licensee. Do not have to be a broker to do a, B, a BPO. However, there's going to be oversight from the broker, possibly a signature at the bottom. So if anybody asks you, can a sales associate or a broker associate do a BPO? A BPO, the answer is going to be yes, with oversight of the broker of that uh, real estate uh, company. Okay, just want to make sure you understand that. Do we use those a lot? No. Let me give you some examples of when we might use those. A BPO might be used if a bank is doing foreclosures and they don't want to spend or they cannot get a hold of an appraiser. They might call you and say, "Listen, we just need to get the value of a property." They're going to call you uh, your your broker, your broker might assign it to you, or the broker might do it himself. Instead of charging maybe seven, eight hundred dollars on it, they might just charge four hundred or whatever the, the, the fee might be. They might not have enough appraisers to do it, so they might get a broker to do a, B, a BPO. Or another example would be a company that maybe is sending their employees to Florida, and part of their compensation package is providing them with a starter home or monies towards a home. They might want a BBPO to make sure that the money that they're putting in, if it's company funds, meets the regulations, rules, and actually they're, they're paying the right price for this house or helping them out. So they can be used for various reasons. I don't do a lot of them. Um, I've seen them done in my brokerages that I've been, been with um, as a former broker and now a broker associate. 
I've seen those done, um, but they're not that common uh, right now. Now, if foreclosures start going up, we'll probably start seeing some of that uh, a little bit more. But everybody understands. Let's look at the appraisal is the high one. The BPO is one below appraisal and the CMA is down here. Okay. All very important, all very good documents, but they just have some uh, minor differences. Okay. Very good. You guys are moving right along. Now, real quick before, before, before a developer can build a community, they must deliver. With, with what is called a subdivision plat map, a okay, subdivision plat map. Now, what is a subdivision plat map, you might ask? Well, a subdivision plat map is nothing more than a layout, a map of that community. That subdivision plat map is going to be, uh, it's going to indicate the infrastructure, the streets, the lots, if there's a park, if there's a lake, if there's a community center, whatever that case may be, they're going to lay that all out. And they are going to submit that to the local planning board, whether it be the city, whether it be the county. They're going to submit that plat map to the local um, planning board, and they're going to get approval for that. They cannot dig, so if you see a question, they cannot start on that project until that has been approved. Very important to make sure you understand that. That has to be approved. That plat map has to be approved. Now, Another interesting word that you're going to see, potentially see on the state exam, is this word called dedication. Dedication. What does dedication mean? Basically, it's a gift. The dedication is a gift of land by the developer to the local government, whether it be the city or it be the county, and it's going to be for public use. So they might go ahead and put in a park. They might go ahead and put a recreational area. Now, it's not required by a developer, but it's probably pretty good business to dedicate a piece of land to your local government, especially when they're approving a subdivision for you or a subdivision plat map. So that happens frequently. So when you see the word dedication, it's a gift of land or um, gift of land for to the government for public use. Okay. Just want to make sure you guys got that. Everybody good on that one. Okay. Now, last but not least, very important to remember this. There are three categories, three categories of residential construction. We need to know all three of them. Let's not get them confused. They can be very easily confused. And if you asked on the state exam, which one is which, you're gonna have to know, okay? Now, the first one is gonna be called speculative. It's a spec home, you probably heard about that. What's gonna happen on this is it's very easy. You have a builder, okay? A builder builds a house without a buyer. They do not know who's going to buy it. it. They're speculating that someone's going to come buy it. So they'll build the home that you build, they will come. That's what a lot of people remember by. You build, they will come. So there's no buyer at the time they build it. They build it on speculation that it's going to sell pretty quickly. Over the last couple of years in Florida, they can't even get these things out of the ground. They're already sold. Okay. That might slowly change a little bit. I think we're reverting back. We're not in a bad time to get your real estate license. Get it, get squared away, get settled down. The onslaught will come back. Trust me, we're in Florida. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful place. We're going to have a ton of people coming here. Okay. There's a couple of things right now. We're slowing things down. Just a little bit of uncertainty more than anything. Okay. The second one, the second one is custom home, custom home. Now, when you go to state exams, you say, custom home, wow, whoa, this is great. Basically, a owner has a piece of property, and then they ask a builder to come in and build them the custom home. The big granddaddy. It's got a huge pool, a garage that fits my RV, a 18-foot uh, ceilings, all this really cool stuff, right? It's a custom home. Everything in it is just the way you want it. They just the way you want it. Custom cabinets, custom flooring, custom ceilings, you know, custom garage, custom pool, custom pool cage, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's custom. A builder builds it on this on the premise that the, the person who's asking them, they get everything they want in it. Now, we say everything they want. Everything customized um, to what they potentially want. Okay? Everybody good on that one? Last but not least is something we see a lot in Florida. See a lot in Florida. Actually, I have one.
These are called track homes. Now, track homes are usually in communities. When you go visit the model, you might have four or five models to, move, to choose from. But essentially, these homes are pretty much the same. They're just in different lots. Or maybe the front's a little bit different. Or maybe the color of the paint or the kitchen is white versus dark or whatever. You do not get a lot of choices in a track home. So think of a large community such as Lennar or DR Horton or GL Homes. They're going to build track homes. Okay, don't get them confused with um, speculation. Now, some of these builders will build homes and then hope that someone comes by them, but they are going to be track homes. And you guys kind of know when you go in these communities that they all pretty much kind of look the same. You might get some different frontages, which, which is called the elevation. But with that being said, those are going to be called track homes, built pretty much the same um, each way. A lot of times you go to the East Coast, you go to some communities and they're all they all look the same. Okay, Same color, same everything. Um, depending on where you live, there's rules. Um, where I live, you can't have the same frontage, but inside the home is exactly the same as the house. Maybe next door, it's just got a different front to it. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I'm here for questions. We got a bunch of people on here. Now, do me a favor. Um, what I want you to do is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a link um, in the in the chat for a, now this one's gonna be um, a class that we're gonna have on Saturday, okay, Saturday. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you an exam here in just a minute, we're gonna give a little quick test. I wanna see how you guys are doing. So don't leave me yet, don't leave me yet, okay? Uh, on Saturday, this Saturday, we are gonna have a cram. Now, the cool thing on the cram is you're gonna get three books that go with the cram session, right? Three books. You're going to be able to go once you sign up you can go for life okay until you pass this this crazy thing so we're going to have more classes this one's going to be on saturday and believe it or not if my voice holds out we are going to have another one we are going to have another one that's going to be coming up on tuesday and wednesday of that week the eighth and ninth we're going to the first time we've done an evening one okay it's the first time we've done we've done an evening one and i'm going to go ahead and give you guys the link on that if you can't find the link, just go into, it'll, it should be on the uh, Facebook page. If not, um, well, that's, the, that's the prep guide. I'm going to put the prep guide up in there too. I want you to see that. That prep guide is unbelievable. I'll give you the password for that. And don't leave me because we're going to do a quiz. Don't leave me. I um, just want to make sure you guys got all these. If you want to come on the 8th and 9th, we're going to do an evening class. It's going to go from 5.30 to 9.30. It's a great class. We're going to do – it's going to go two nights. So we're going to cover the first half and the second half. That's going to be linked there, okay? Um, you got a lot of, a lot of really good, good information. What I want you to do is – oh, on the book, make sure you go in and you put CRAM2022 on the book. Cram 2022. That's going to give you 30% uh, off. I think it takes it. It's regularly 27. I think it comes up to like $18. That's got everything you need to know. It's going to be, it's going to be great for you. Okay. Um, I think I might have a picture of that. Let me look real quick. If I can find that. Hmm. It's not going to be that one. Yeah, I don't have the picture, but hit that link and you'll be able to get everything. Okay. Let's see who's ready for the exam okay it might take me a second to get there uh i'm gonna go ahead and give you that exam uh, quizzes for pages now what i'd like to have you guys do is i would like to have you guys and gals do your best on this and please try to put the answers in the exam i'm gonna go ahead and make this full screen okay full screen so you can see it, it might be a little bit but if you can put the answers in on the comments, that makes things real easy for me. I, if you're on Facebook, I will not know your names. But if you're on YouTube, I will know it. So you can do that. Um, all right. Is everybody good on this one? Can you all see it okay? I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's go ahead with the first answer on the quiz. Okay. The real estate business. What is the business of bringing buyers, sellers, owners together for a real estate transaction? Anybody know that? Can everybody tell me? Go ahead on the comments. 
please tell me on the comments if you can. What is the business of bringing buyers, sellers, and owners together for a real estate transaction? Good job, real estate brokerage. Nice. I'm going to see if I can go into my account and see who's answering these because I want to make sure I can give them the credit they deserve when they get these things. Okay, let me let me see if I can do this real quick. Okay, I think I can. Nice job. Okay, good job, Jessica. I appreciate that. That's a good one. Way to go. It's going to be real estate brokerage. Let's go ahead and see if it's correct. A real estate brokerage. Nice job. Way to go on that one. Okay, let's go to the next question. Which is not one of the five major sales specialties in the real estate business? Which is not one of the five major specialties in the real estate business anybody tell me that no we get erica valerie good job recreational another good one good job just because she's fired up in there okay we know we got residential we've got agriculture we have commercial What's the other one? We have also industrial, right? Good job, Haley. Good job on that one. So, yes, recreational is not one of the five major sales specialties. Let's go to the next question. Which category of residential construction involves using several model homes, often looking similar? Can anybody tell me that one? Can anybody tell me that one? Mike. YouTubers, can you help me on that one? What's this one? Krista answered the right one last time. Krista, good job. Track. Let's go ahead and put Krista's up here. This is Krista. It just doesn't show. Um, let's see the other one. Good job, Priyanka. Track. Good job, uh, Priyanka. Way to go. Good job, Stina. Nice job. Good job, everybody. Okay, let's go to the next one. Licensees who engage in the sale, purchase, or leases of businesses are called what? Are called what? Anybody tell me? Looking for the big answer here. Looking for the big answer. A little bit more time. Good group. Good group. Okay. Licensees who engage in sale, purchase, or leases of businesses are called. What are they called? Okay. We got somebody put realtors up there. Okay. Now, before you put that, be careful putting that up there. Realtors, Jessica put it up there. We technically are not realtors just because we're licensed. Is that it? Does that make sense? If this question were to come up, we would hope you would be realtors, but to be a realtor, you have to be a member of the National Association of Realtors and your local board. In this case, it's going to be business brokers, licensees who engage in the sale, purchase, or leases of businesses called business brokers. Everybody good with that one? Um, for you that you guys that put realtors on there, not necessarily 100% wrong. Just make sure, be careful, you receive that on the state exam. When you get your real estate license, you do not become a realtor until you become a member of the group, okay? Member of the group. And that group is the National Association of Realtors, and that's based out of Chicago, but you will have a local board um, where you live, more than likely, okay? Good job, everybody. All right, just want to make sure we clear that. What is a marketing technique used by many successful real estate agents to develop business in a specific or market demographic? You may tell me what that one is. You may tell me what that one is. Good job, Haley. You got that one right. The last one. 
Anybody tell, tell me what this answer is. What is the marketing technique used by many successful real estate agents to develop businesses in a specific area or market? Nice job. Way to go. Priyanka, good job. Donna, way to go. Krista, very good. Okay, that's going to be farming. Excellent job. Farming. Okay. Working our way through. This is what a good sales associate does for buyers or sellers after the transaction is concluded. Okay, after the transaction is concluded. What do you think that might be? Anybody know what that might be? This is what a good sales associate does for buyers or sellers after the transaction. Franca, way to go. Nice job, everybody. Jessica, good job as well follow-up okay buying a closing gift is part of follow-up okay so buy a closing gift not a bad thing to do but the word we're looking for is follow-up good job donna way to go follow-up very good okay getting to the end here the leasing managing marketing and overall maintenance of property for others is called what it's called what the leasing, managing, marketing, and overall maintenance of property for others is called what? Priyanka, nice job. Way to go. Let me put that. I got to put these up here every now and then. Show everybody. Way to go. Nice job, Stina. Property management. Right. Very good. Property management. Let's go ahead and click property management. Good job, everybody. Excellent. Way to go, Donna. Jessica, good job on that. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Now, I don't think we covered why well, we did cover this one. Yes, we did cover this one. Let's see if you guys can get the answer. A gift of land by an owner to a government body for a public use is called what? What's that called? A gift of land by an owner to a governmental body for a public use is called what? All right. You guys are kicking it. Where do you go, Jessica? Lucy, I love it. Lucy's in there. She's, she's my favorite. Lucy's in there. Dedication. Good job, Donna. Awesome. Krista, perfect. Yes, remember, gift dedication. Gift dedication for public use. Okay, way to go. All right, let's look at this next one. Let's see if we can get this one. Some are jumping out fast. It's okay. All right, owners of investment real estate who do not reside on the premises are called what? Are called what? If you do owners of investment real estate who do not reside on the premises are called what? Look at that one closely, Haley. Way to go, Donna, Jessica, Priyanka. Good job, Donna. Nice. Okay, let's see here. Absentee owner. Good job, Priyanka. We got a few more people that got it. When it it doesn't, if it doesn't take your name, it doesn't say your name. It's just because it didn't. Good job, Lucy. JC, JC in the house with absentee. Good job, JC. Very good. We got Haley, dedication. She was back at the last one, but good job on that one. Okay, very good. All right, let's go ahead and see what that is. Absentee owners. Nice job. Okay. Last question, last question. The process of purchasing lots and constructing homes without securing a buyer is known as what? Without securing a buyer is known as what? Can you all tell me? Can you all tell me? Okay, good. Good job, Jessica. Nice job. Donna, nice job. 
keep putting Priyanka up because her name pops up on the Facebook. Stina, what do we got? Building on speculation. Perfect. The other ones, remember, custom home, that's going to be build your dream home. Get your builder to do it. Building a track home is going to be a nice home. Could be very nice. Just you're very limited. And most of the homes look very similar. You have less options. Okay? Less options. Okay? All right. Real quick, want to remind you again. Come back on. Want to remind you again about Saturday. I put it on the Facebook group, the link. Again, on Saturday, make sure you put FB40. You get 40% off. FB40, you get three man, you get three manuals. You get all the information. It's going to be very similar to this. We're going to go through the different um, units. We're going to go through all of the information that you're going to need to pass the real estate exam. As you can see in the group, a lot of people that take the cram class do very well in the state exam. Our goal is to get you through it on the first try. If you don't get through on the first try, we're going to get you really close, and we're going to encourage you to get you through, okay? You guys have been outstanding. I love doing this session. We'll do more next week. Um, again, very good information. Remember, it's very important that we read, read, read the information, okay? Read the information. These study groups are just that. They supplement you reading the stuff, okay? Because a lot of times people are like, well, I, got, you know, I, I don't know exactly what to study. On the very top in the Facebook group, okay? You go in the Facebook group, at the very top you'll see featured. These quizzes that we just did, they're on there, okay? Please go on and take them. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing you Saturday. If you can't come on Saturday, and it's going to be in the events, if you can't come on Saturday, join us on Tuesday and Wednesday, the 8th and 9th. It's going to be a couple of evening classes. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, we go through it. It's really enjoyable. Uh, this group is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, we want to do a lot more for you. Our goal is to get you through Florida Pro Real Estate Academy. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. Here's all the people that passed. It's going to be good to see that. Thank you.